Lord, as we start this new month, the month of April, we declare that we will worship you in this month. That, Lord, we will glorify you as we have unique encounters with you. That in all that we do, Lord, we will be set apart for you. We declare your victory ahead of us in this month. And we choose to live lives set apart for you. That, God, we will shine for you in everything that we do. That, Lord, as we get to understand the journey that our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, walked to the cross, that we will live lives set apart for you that holiness will be within us as we set our lives apart, as we continuously consecrate ourselves to you. We dedicate, Lord, this Monday unto you and the rest of this week to your leading, to your care, to your, to your, to your majesty, God, that every single day each one of us will have a unique encounter with you. Just pray that indeed you'll have a unique encounter with the Lord, that you'll have a unique encounter with God as you read his word, as we meditate on his holiness, we will each have a unique encounter with him as we celebrate another Passover, a Pascha, as we celebrate Easter 2023, that it won't be just another Easter remembrance, another celebration, but one that will bring us a complete total transformation that we will see something new happening in each of our lives. We will see something new happen in our families. There are people in our midst that have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. There are homes that still struggle with people that are lost to addictions, to powers of darkness. Let's pray that as we meditate on the holiness of Christ, as we meditate on the passion of Christ, that it won't be just another experience, but those people, those individuals will come to a living encounter with a living God, one that saves, one that redeems, one that transforms, one that washes our sin away and gives us a new life by his grace, by his mercies. Lord, we thank you for those people in our homes. We thank you, Lord, for those brothers, those sisters. We thank you for those wonderful children that you've called us to nurture. We thank you for those communities. We see them and we pray that during this week as different missions go around, as different teachings are brought to your children, may somebody come to add the faith, the living faith in Christ Jesus. May somebody come to know you as Lord and Savior. Please let's list those, let's, let's raise those names, those individuals before the Lord. For some of us it could be be our parents. Lord, for some of us, it is our friends. It is the people in our company. It is the people that we love. They are lost out there and being tormented by the evil one. Lord, you overcame evil. It is our prayer that as we lift these individuals before you, indeed, together we will testify of you setting them free and them overcoming whatever are the forces of oppression that have entangled them. Lord, save your children, for in you, Lord, nothing is impossible. And so, God, as we prepare to share in your word, Master, it is a prayer that you will indeed speak, for we, your children, are listening in Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You are very welcome, those of us that are attending uh, online. Thank you so much for sparing time, these minutes, for us to be together as we share in God's word. Those of us that are physically coming here at All Saints Cathedral, we praise the Lord for the gift of fellowship. Praise the Lord. Our sharing this afternoon is centered on the theme Christ, our horn of salvation. Christ, our horn of salvation. Christ, our horn of salvation. Or Christ, the horn of our salvation. Taking a reading from Luke chapter 1, the Gospel of Luke chapter 1, verse 67 to verse 79. 
Luke 1, 67 to 79. As your neighbor turns to that, please look at them with a smile and say, neighbor, you are welcome to Holy Week Reflections. Amen? You are welcome to Holy Week Reflections. You are welcome to Holy Week uh, Reflections. Uh, if you are online, maybe are using one of those gadgets where you can send a message to somebody, please uh, throw that message to them and uh, tell them, welcome to Holy Week uh, 2023. I'll read Luke chapter 1, verse 67. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. Look, chapter 1, now at verse 76. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. The gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are in uh, this special week that you call the Holy Week the Holy Week. And uh, I can see those of us physically present here, you are really looking very holy. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor that I am really, really, uh, you, neighbor, you're looking very holy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Holy Week. It's not about the outward looking, but rather the inside of us. Praise the Lord. The Holy Week has another name called the Passion Week. The Passion Week. Passion Week. Now, Towards Good Friday, on Good Friday, we usually show a movie called The Passion of? The Passion of? The Passion of Christ. Now, passion, in Latin, the word passion has got to do with suffering. Suffering. So when you actually move them, when you watch the movie, this passion of Christ, it is all about the suffering of Christ. It is a suffering for a cause of setting people free. That's why it has the passion aspect of it, that somebody is in love with his people, with people, and somebody is ready to do anything in order to set those people free. The passion. When you are passionate about something, about someone, you'll do anything possible, everything possible to get that thing or to reach to that person. And in this week, this holy week, as we journey with the life of Christ Jesus to the cross, we see him passionately demonstrating his love for his people. On Palm Sunday, this week starts Palm Sunday, when we celebrate his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, and we see him crying unto the city of Jerusalem. And we see him saying, you, you people in Jerusalem, if we only knew what is happening now, and how the enemy will soon build an embankment around you, and how you'll be surrounded by the enemy, if only you knew that, then you would receive salvation now. But these people remained stubborn. They objected the salvation that Christ was bringing. 
And today we see the world that isn't today because, again, people have not fully opened up their hearts and their lives to the Lord Jesus. And so he continues to come to us today, to our families, to us as individuals. In your offices, the Lord comes to us and says, people, if only you knew this is my visitation unto you. And it is a prayer that this won't be just another week of we religiously, traditionally going through this, but rather a week for us to welcome the visitation of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, welcome the visitation of the Lord. Welcome the visitation of the Lord. Amen. Hey, pass on online. Welcome the visitation of the Lord. And it is our prayer that there will be a visitation of this God for each one of us in our different positions and in our different responsibilities at family level, all levels of life that you testify of the Lord visiting us. Praise the Lord. The suffering of Christ we will see as we journey towards Good Friday, him carrying the cross. It is his passion. He's saying, I'm going to do all things possible to bring humanity back to me. So we are going to see him suffer. We are going to see him carry the cross. Christ is ready to do anything. God is ready to do anything in order for us to see his love and receive his love as he demonstrates to us. It is our prayer that we shall not miss out on this. When he washes the feet of the disciples, and during this week we'll have a time of washing people's feet. I can't wait to have the provost wash my feet all my days. Hello. A demonstration of servanthood. Amen. I'll also come and wash your feet. Maybe on, on that day, this is, going to be, this is going to happen on Thursday. You can tease us by not washing the feet. You come in very dirty. The Lord Jesus, demonstrating servanthood and love unto the disciples, washes their feet. Praise the Lord. A culture that we are going to do to remember what he did in his very last days. Not just to remember, but to demonstrate that we are called equally in the love of Christ to serve one another. Today, as we reflect on this subject, Christ, the horn of our salvation. Christ, the horn of our salvation. We are looking at a unique song that Zechariah sings as recorded by the uh, disciple, by the apostle Luke. So Luke records the, the, the song that Zechariah sings. And why is Zechariah singing this song? You read before and you see that he's responding to God's mighty acts in his life as a person. But he prophesies and says, this is beyond me as an individual, but it is for the salvation of humanity. Praise the Lord. Many times, God will do particular things for us as individuals, and they are a sign, a demonstration that he is at work, not for us only as individuals, but also for all his people. Zechariah and his wife, who are righteous people, as the word of God tells us in Luke chapter 1, verse 6. He is a priest. He is serving for the Lord. And verse 6 of Luke chapter 1 tells us, both of them, him and his wife, were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. Can you imagine? A blameless man and his wife, wonderful couple, blamelessly serving the Lord. Hallelujah. Walking in holiness with the Lord. Probably attending lunch hours, showing total commitment unto knowing and worshiping the Lord. Verse 7 of Luke chapter 1. But they were childless. Because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both old. Did you hear that? They are blamelessly following the Lord. They are blamelessly serving the Lord. But they are childless. Because Elizabeth was not able to conceive 
And then they were both very old. I don't know whether you are one of those people who approaches this Holy Week with the sense of, God, I have brought my best to you. I have served you the best of I can ever do. I have sacrificed all my comfort. In fact, Lord, people have actually labeled me Mr., Madam, Sister, Brother, Blameless. Praise the Lord. Some of us in our places of work, we are known as the pastors. Some of you are called the bishops. Some of you are called the prophets. Here is Zechariah, a blameless man, together with his wife. They observed all holiness in their very old age. They remained childless. Even for such people, even for such circumstances, God says, I have a purpose. Hallelujah. I have a reason. So don't give up on me. Zechariah was serving the Lord that particular moment when he had the encounter with God. It was his time to be on duty. And as he had his time of serving God, he gets a vision. He gets an encounter with the Lord. We read in verse 13, as Zechariah, as a priest who was serving before the Lord, verse 13 says, The angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Hallelujah. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't this the kind of maybe moment you want to hear during this Holy Week? Fear not, Paulson. All your issues have been sorted. But for Zechariah, it was time after time, consistent waiting on the Lord, committed service to the Lord, blamelessly following the Lord. And I think this particular evening, as he went to the temple, to serve God's people at the temple, to intercede for the people in the Holy of Holies. I don't think Zechariah was actually praying that you'd have a child. How many of us have received answers to things that you didn't pray for? But God did something, and probably you aren't praying for it, and you've seen God do something for your life. You are very busy praying for these other things. You are busy looking this other direction and innocently serving the Lord. And in the process of doing that, God meets the need that you actually didn't mention to him. He does that for his purpose. Hallelujah. He does that that is glorified. He does that that his ultimate purpose is achieved many times. We as believers, it is easy for us to come in the presence of God and we say, God intervene in this circumstance and becomes one week, two weeks, a month, and years. God is doing many other things. For Zechariah, it was to do with, you are in your very old age, your wife is in a very old age, and you are going to have a son. You will call him the name John. And the next verses tell us how John is going to be a great man, how he's going to be a great person, how he's going to be used mightily for the Lord. One of the things, and very critical, that John is going to do at the end of verse 17 is to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Is to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. He's going to be the ambassador. He's going to be the forerunner. He's going to come ahead of what God has prepared for the world in Christ Jesus. And Zechariah, in his doubt and in his human nature, he says, but angel, verse 18, how can I be sure of this? I am old and my wife is well advanced in years. He presented the facts that showed that by all means, this will not happen. By all these means, that this dream certainly would never ever be fulfilled. And it's possible again that in our day-to-day -day life, there is all this kind of 
by the way things stand, it is impossible for us to have a divine hand and outworking of the Lord. Zechariah expresses himself before the angel. How can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well on in years. And the angel said to him in verse 19, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I have sent, I've been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you'll be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words which will come true at their appointed time. And from that time on, this wonderful priest serving before the Lord, Zechariah, could not speak, was speechless, was dumb. He couldn't speak a single word. God's word came true because the next verses tell us Elizabeth actually conceived and was with a child. We see this in verse 23 when this his time of service was completed. He returned home. Verse 24 tells us, Luke chapter 1, verse 24. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. Five months she's pregnant. Five months, Zechariah is dumb. Zechariah is not saying, saying a single word. Meaning, even when he went home, he couldn't explain to his wife what the Lord had said to him while in his presence. He couldn't say to the wife that the angel has said you are going to be pregnant and that you shall have a son and I shall call the name John. He was speechless. He was in a position where he would not declare anything. We are told that the wife Elizabeth became pregnant for five months. She was in seclusion and verse 25 reads, The Lord has done this to me. This is Elizabeth now celebrating. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. Praise the Lord. The Lord has taken away my disgrace. As we start off this holy week, could we start this week with the understanding that we serve a God who never fails? Amen? Amen. La Lord we serve, mukamo takolachi talema. I want us to sing this song. And with that meditation ushering us to now this song that eventually Zechariah himself composes when John is born. And for us to sing this song is to say, we come before the Lord with these huge expectations. And we walk blamelessly before God. But many times we say, God, where are you? Where is the divine encounter? Where is the testimony? Lord, we've heard of the great works you've done, but we do not seem to see them. Here, Elizabeth is testifying while the husband is dumb. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. Lord, how I pray that Elizabeth's testimony will be a testimony of somebody here. That Elizabeth's testimony will be my testimony. Even when there are particular things we have given up on, that in Christ Jesus we know, our God, you never fail. Bamuyita Yesu. Talema. Hallelujah. Please quiet. Let's join in singing that song together as we meditate on this God this Lord Jesus Christ who never fails. Thank you, Lord.
us never fails. That is who you are. You never fail. You didn't fail in Zachariah's life. You didn't fail his testimony of him blamelessly serving you in holiness, pursuing you. Lord, you did not fail in the life of Elizabeth. Lord, you do not fail. Many times we face circumstances, situations that seem so powerful, circumstances that seem so great, and we are made to look powerless and unable. But thank you that as we remember the journey you walked, even on the cross, Lord, you did not fail. May you give us this assurance today, this assurance this week, that you are the horn of our salvation. Lord, you do not fail. You have every strength, you have every power and every authority. Lord, you are the way maker, making a way where there is no way. Lord, may you speak to us and give us a new faith and a hope that we serve God who never fails. In Christ Jesus our Lord, we pray. Amen. A loud amen, friends. Amen. Amen. And so now, as before Zechariah composes this song, we ended at five months pregnant for Elizabeth, and time comes when she gives birth, as we read in Luke chapter 1, beginning from verse 57. Eventually, Elizabeth, in her old age, gave birth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Many times, when you're encouraging ourselves as believers, we say age is just a number. Hallelujah. Many times there comes that moment when you feel what we desired to achieve has lived out, has lived off its time, something like that. You start this project and you're saying within five years we must achieve, have achieved this. Five years come and the project is not taking root. Let me tell you, at God's timing, he makes everything beautiful. Elizabeth gives birth. And the people in the community are saying, let's call him Zechariah. Remember at this point, Zechariah is not speaking. But Elizabeth, now remember I mentioned, the husband had not shared with him the right name for the son. Because immediately he doubted what God had told him through angel Gabriel. He became dumb. But when you read verse 59 of Luke chapter 1, verse 59, on the eighth day, when they came to circumcise the child, they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, no, 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 no. You know how we reverends come here and then baptizing this child and say, okay, name the child. And the reverend is very quick to name the child. At this point, Zechariah's mother, Elizabeth said, no, 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 we cannot call him Zechariah. It was also in their culture, in the tradition, as it is in our time today, to mutejereize, it is important that your children have the surname to mutejereize. So it was the same here for Zechariah's son, John, especially that special son, to carry the name Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, no, he is to be called John. And the question is, how did she know? How did she know? Because she was not there when the angel spoke to Gab when Gabriel spoke to Zechariah that your son is going to be called John. As we read in chapter 1, verse 13 at the end, you are to call him John. Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. And after that, he gets dumb. But here, John has eventually come. He's to be named. And Elizabeth says, no, you can't call him Zechariah. His name is going to be called John. Praise the Lord. God had prepared this long ago. God had foreseen this long ago. The preparation for John to come had been already known and planned by the Lord. And they said to her, there is no one among your relatives who has that name. And eventually, we read 
in verse 62, how they now approached to the father. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. They said, okay, mama has given this child a name, but culturally we are going to ask the father, daddy, what is the name of this dear son who comes to you in your old age? And they used the signs. So he asked for a writing tablet. And to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. Praise the Lord. His name is John. And as soon as he did that, we are told immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue set free and he began to speak and praising the Lord his God. Hallelujah. And part of the praising of God, when John, when, when Zechariah's mouth is opened, is the song that we have already read from verses 67 to verse 79. It is a praise to the Lord. It is a song that is prophetically speaking unto what God has done, why he has done what is done, and what God actually wants his people to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As I want to finish with these three, that Zechariah is declaring what God has done in verse 68. Verse 68, praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. Hallelujah. What has he done? He has come to his people. Friends, as we celebrate this Holy Week, let's remember that the coming of Jesus was God himself coming into the world as we call the incarnation. God said, I will come and live in your circumstance, in your situation, in your suffering, in the fallen world, I will come there and live with you. The Christian God does not sit in the heavenlies and see his people suffer. He says, I am coming to suffer with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There is no other deity that we say ever walked with his people. There is no other divinity, divine power that we say ever walked with the people in their circumstances. The God in his son Jesus Christ came down to redeem his people. What has he done? He has come down to us. Praise the Lord. Not only has he come to his people, verse 68, we read, verse 69, he has raised up a horn of salvation for us. Praise the Lord. He has raised up a horn of salvation. Many times I've seen the archbishop visit a place. Now, when the archbishop visits this cathedral, as the archbishop of the church of Uganda, You've seen that stuff, we call it the stick, something like that. The rod, a symbol of his authority, as Moses used to carry the staff the Lord had given him. That staff is brought, if this lectern was not here, is positioned here and stands here as a sign of the authority of the one God has called to over, over, oversight over this diocese and the entire church of Uganda. And that he's going to perform official duties as the archbishop. I saw that in Mohabura. I also saw that in North Kigesi. And so it is positioned there. So everyone who has come to attend sees that it is a symbol. It's not the authority of God, but it's a symbol to show that God has vested authority unto this person and has come here to perform duties as the authority demands. Now, when we talk about Jesus Christ raised up as a horn of salvation for us, we are saying that in Christ Jesus, authority has been demonstrated for us as believers. Hallelujah. The authority to bring us redemption. The authority to set us free. The authority to deliver people from wickedness, from sin, from all powers of the world 
in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Why is Zechariah singing this? Because he has seen that work in his own life. By the powers of the world and oppressions of this world, in his old years, he is not having a child. God has divinely encountered, gotten into his circumstance, and here Zechariah stands with a child. Praise the Lord. And now he sings and says, hey, God has raised up a horn of salvation. Sal horns have got to do with strength, power, authority, and of the Lord into our circumstance to set us free, to deliver us from the powers of the world around us. Why has he done this? To save us from our enemies, as you read the verses following, verse 72, to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember his holy covenant, verse 74, to rescue us from the hand of the enemies, to enable us to serve him without fear. Praise the Lord. And so in God coming to us in Christ Jesus, we see him setting people free and giving us a life free, delivered from sin and the powers of this world. And with this, we are called then to, be, to stand above our enemies and to serve the Lord without fear. Hallelujah. To serve the Lord without fear. To know him without fear. You can imagine the new status, the celebration that Elizabeth and Zechariah have as they serve the Lord without fear, without any hindrance. They are set free to be the ambassadors of the Lord. They are given a new state as we read that in him is holiness and righteousness before him or for all the days of their lives, as we see in verse 75. Serve the Lord without fear and live in holiness and righteousness before the Lord all the days of our lives. A new state that we've gained in Christ Jesus. When we receive salvation, when we are set free from the powers of sin and delivered from the entanglements of this world, we are called to live in holiness and righteousness before the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so this God gives us this new status. To live lives renewed in him. And again, during this Holy Week, doing a personal examination and ask, how am I living in holiness and in righteousness with the Lord? And lastly, we read from verses 76 and on. Now, Zechariah turns to his son, to the son that has come to him. Do you notice that Zechariah is not praising John, but is rather praising the Lord for what he has done because John is going to point to someone bigger than him, the horn of salvation, one in whom is all power and strength. And this takes us to three that shows us then what is our responsibility? What are we then called to do? What should we do with what God has done and why he has rescued us and enabled us to serve him without fear that we are going to be his ambassadors. We are going to be his people that will declare his goodness, his love to all the people around us and in this world. Verse 76. And you, my child, now speaking to John, prophesying unto John, you will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him. Praise the Lord. Again to say, everything God has given us is that we shall serve him. Hallelujah. Everything God has made us is that we shall serve him. The deliverance we have received, the authority over powers of wickedness that we have is that we shall serve the Lord. No matter the suffering that we see, no matter the tough situations that are around us, we trust that God will intervene and he intervenes that we are enabled, empowered to serve him. We'll serve him because he shows his tender mercies to us. And by his tender mercies, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path 
of peace. How is this going to happen for us? For John, he was going to be the front runner of Christ Jesus. That's why John comes out and says, repent for the kingdom of God has come. For you and I, it is to say, we carry on this ambassadorial work of proclaiming the Lord Jesus Christ reigning in every place God positions us and calls us to be. Praise the Lord. And so with what God has done, we pray that indeed in Christ Jesus, we stand out as his ambassadors. That in Christ Jesus, we to respond and allow him to be the horn of our salvation, to be the strength of our salvation. And he then empowers us to go out and serve him. He is the ultimate strength. Without him, we are only going to be in the losing battle. With him, time will come when he shall be victorious. Zechariah testifies that even when his answers didn't come immediately, time came when that child came. God answered his questions and his circumstances, not for any reason that his name shall be glorified. Praise the Lord. That John will continue to serve the Lord. And it is a prayer that we too, with what God has given us and all that we are, will continue to serve him. Let's stand together as we pray. Zechariah standing as a weak person in Christ Jesus and the promises of God, he became strong. One that was serving before God and was childless in his old years, God brings this child, John, that the name of the Lord will continue to be glorified and that John would serve the Lord as the flag bearer, as the front runner of Christ Jesus. How we pray that we too here today, despite the circumstances that we face day to day, will remain patient as we wait on the Lord, will remain in holiness and in the pursuit of righteousness, and that we'll use what God has given us for the service of the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's a song that the weak say that I am strong. As we sing this song, friends, let's see God coming in our circumstances and saying he wants to use us to be ambassadors of hope unto his people. And it's not about our strength, but making Christ Jesus central and unto his strength shall we be able to shine for him and to serve his people. Thank you, Jesus. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the blind say I can see. It's what the Lord has done let the weak say let the weak say I am strong oh let the poor say I am rich let the blind say I can see it's what the Lord has done Jesus, you who died and rose again, you remain our strength. You remain the authority upon which we operate, upon which we serve, and upon which we build our hope. Lord, it is my prayer that we gathered here and we listening into this message. 
church. The testimony that you gave Zechariah, you intervening in his circumstance, that Lord, you will divinely intervene in a circumstance of another person today. That God, this Jesus, the one that is our hope for our salvation. The Lord Jesus, one in whom is authority, that we've been set free from the entanglements, from the powers of wickedness around us. In Christ Jesus, that you'll continue to stand out as your ambassadors, living in righteousness, living without fear. In boldness, we continue to proclaim your name to all around us, that by our testimony, people will get to know you. By our testimony, darkness shall flee. By what you have given us and done for us, Lord, we will serve your holy purposes. We thank you that this week you cause us to focus on the mission for which John the Baptist was the front runner, declaring the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb that sets people free, that washes away our sin. Lord, it is our prayer that will behold you, we will understand you, and that will serve you. King of kings, may you visit each one of us in a special way, that your name be glorified, your name will be exalted. In Christ Jesus our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Choir will give us a song as we bring our thanksgiving and make our final prayer as we end. Thank you, Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna Jesus died and rose again. we thank you that not only did you carry this cross heavy as it was tough as it was you were rejected you were abandoned but you never abandoned the mission for which you'd come into this world to bring salvation to your people and thank you that the authority that you gave to the apostles the authority as you passed on, as you commissioned them to go into the world to teach believers, to preach and to teach those that come to you and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that this carries on even our time today. Lord, as you walk this week, help us to fully grasp that love and to fully embrace the new calling that you desire of us to step out to serve you. Thank you for these gifts that we bring together, the ones that we wire for the service of your kingdom and for the fulfillment of your purposes. Lord, we pray that each one of us here will continue to be your faithful ambassadors in all that we do, wherever you've placed us in Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Now may the blessing of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Rest upon each one of you, children of God. May you go and testify of the power of the Lord at work in you. Those of us that are weak, may the Lord grant us divine strength. May the Lord lift each one of us up. And as we meditate on God's holiness, His passion, and His suffering, may you embrace a new character that will shine for Him. For some of us that are surrounded by impossibilities, like it seemed to be impossible for Elizabeth in her old age, for Zechariah in his old age to have a son. But the Lord intervened in their circumstance. May you testify of God divinely intervening in situations where you have lost hope, where hope is all gone, things that you have abandoned. May the Lord show his might and his strength that he'll do it for you in order for you to know that you are called to serve him, that what the Lord is doing for you is for his service. He demonstrates his strength 
that will shall serve him without fear in boldness and with a testimony of holiness and righteousness. May that be our portion we all now and forevermore. Amen. 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 God richly bless you.